Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Akhtar Farid Siddiqui and uh, I am a consultant, senior psychiatrist. Today is January the 2nd uh, and the new year 2022. Um, from myself, uh, I am wishing all of you a very, very happy new year. Uh, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, depression. Um, I treat a lot of patients with depression and uh, we know that uh, not uh, even psychiatrists or psychologists but even a uh, small uh, kid can uh, know the term depression uh, and uh, it's not been happening uh, many years back but this term, this word is so common nowadays someone who's frustrated, who's stressed out just saying that I'm depressed. Um, today I uh, read an article about depression and that really touches my heart uh, that was uh, to me that was so beautiful and I want to share that article with you and the article's uh, name is uh, why is depression increasing uh, this is a question why it is increasing and in this article uh, uh, the main theme is that uh, misplaced values and lack of human connections and meaningful work could be the real cause of increasing mental health issues in society so I will start the article now that uh, I have lost my job and I'm struggling to pay my rent, says uh, 25 years old Myra. I want to study further but don't have the money for college tuition. With no support and not a soul in this world who truly cares about me. I keep asking myself why was I ever born? Will I ever matter to anyone if I live or I die? Each time I leave the local distress center in Toronto, after my shift on the distress line, I drive home in silence, going over conversations such as the one above. I started working at the distress center during the pandemic and I'm truly amazed for lack of better work at experiencing first-hand just now widespread mental health is uh, um, issues are. I, it makes me shudder how people from all ages are battling loneliness, anxiety, depression and several mental health issues including suicidal ideations. It is still a widely held belief that our biology is largely responsible for these disorders. Our genes making us more susceptible for a chemical imbalance in the brain and the depressants are still touted as the final line of treatment strongly suggesting that the medication is the only viable solution but John Harry in his book Lost Connections challenges these conventional reviews and misconceptions speaking from his own a decade long experience with antidepressants and journey to recovery, he believes that although medication provides short term relief, it does induce a dependency and most importantly, merely treat the symptoms and not the underlying deep rooted issues. Most of the factors contributing to depression and anxiety are found not in our biology but in our environment and the way we live. Hence, depression and anxiety are, uh, are a response to life experiences and not merely the result of an imbalance. Our growing disconnection from people is one of the biggest contribution contributors to the prevalent high incidence of depression and anxiety. We are creatures of connections coming from tribes raised and nurtured by our loved ones, socialized into being who we are. And yet in today's fast-paced world, we have sadly disbanded our tribes and rather than thinking of, of, of ourselves as a collective group, we operate as an isolated individuals. Constantly being told to be, become self-sufficient, independent and take care of ourselves, our focus has shifted to meeting our own individual needs. We may be surrounded by people at social events, wedding, family gatherings, but we still suffer from acute loneliness if we don't share anything meaningful with them. Although we connect with people at superficial level on social media, we hardly have any deep connections where we share our problems, 
joys and sorrows, says Sarah, an IT professional in her mid-30s. I have over 1,000 followers on Instagram and roughly as many as on Facebook. But when I was struggling mentally and emotionally in a crisis, it hit me that I had no one to turn on. I felt utterly alone and realized how meaningless these friendships were. Services such as distress centers fulfill one of the biggest and often ignored psychological needs of men to feel seen and heard. People call in for multiple reasons, such as loneliness, relationship issues, anger management, thoughts of suicide, school of work issues, and addiction, and are, and are provided support non judgmentally I know you can solve my problem, but it feels so reassuring to talk to someone who cares. Says 49 years old Duran, a single parent and raising two little girls, appreciating the importance of having someone to talk to at a distress center. I don't know where I had been or what would happen if you weren't here to listen to me. In the absence of meaningful connections, we have the tendency to fall down on an endless spiral of anxiety and depression. Numerous studies conducted across Europe, Asia, North America and Australia confirms that the more materialistic and reward driven your motivation, the more anxious and depressed you are likely to be. Material goods such as new iPhone or a salary raise may provide happiness initially. However, after a while, they simply become the new normal and will not give a sustained level of happiness or lead to more fulfilling lives. Social comparisons and the pressure of measure, for example, or which car to drive or, to, or the scale of your child's wedding damage your self-esteem and further intensify feelings of depression and anxiety. Unfortunately, as a society, we are increasing driven to what Harry likely to fast food for the soul. Just as junk food does not meet our nutritional needs, these junk values are not meeting our psychological needs. I have all the luxuries and the amenities I could possibly wish for, says Adam, a 41 years old successful businessman executive. A gorgeous house, the latest gadgets and cars, and yet I find myself struggling to get out of bed every morning. According to a 2010 Harvard Business School survey on happiness covering 136 countries, altruistic people are the far the happiest. In addition to reducing levels of stress and anxiety, doing things for others increase the level of feel-good hormones, serotonin and oxytocin in our bodies. Then there is an issue of meaningfulness in our book. Between 2011 and 2012, Gallup con conducted the most detailed study of millions of people across 142 countries in relation to how they feel about their work. A mere 13% of people were enthusiastic, committed, or felt they made a positive contribution to, to, their, or, to their organization. Meanwhile, a, a staggering 63% admitted to be merely going through the motions without any passion for their work. Another 24% claimed to be actively disengaged. I do not look forward to work. It's just something I have to do, say Maria, a middle-aged lawyer. I am miserable, but having invested so much time, money and effort to become a lawyer, I feel trapped by just a tragic on. When work is enriching, you feel more energized, so it is of utmost importance to find work that fuels your passion. Otherwise, you find yourself on a sure sure short path of depression of course not everyone finds fulfilling work all the time it is important to understand the importance of perseverance to make the living as well but that is where human connections can help we need to realize that we cannot survive alone teamwork and codependence are crucial not only to survive but to thrive acknowledging our mental struggles is not a sign of weakness it's what makes us human. In the words of David Mitchell, the British actor and writer, 
you are allowed to feel messed up and inside out. It does not mean you are defective. It just means you are a human.